On this episode of Hudson Valley Hustle, I sat down with Russell Rojas, owner of Rojas Collectibles in the Galleria in Middletown. Russell's been a collector ever since he was a kid and has now turned it into a thriving collectible business in the mall. Whether you're just a collector or you're somebody who's looking to turn your passion into a business, this is a good episode for you. Enjoy. So were you always a collector or did you get into the business of collecting? So yeah, I started as a collector. From the beginning, I've always collected random stuff. My father would go crazy and let me buy like, there was like minifigures, versions of Star Wars ships. That's how I started these like little Star Wars ships. Were and they Lego or were they no, just they were like, like figures? They were like replica of like any ship in Star Wars. And like he would buy me so many of those and I would go crazy. And that, that's just a start. From that point on, I think I started collecting crazy at 13 with my best friends. Yeah, we were like crazy into pops, cards, everything. We Anything we could just waste our money on. It was crazy. But collecting has been always a big part of my life. Always, always. I think everyone collects something. I think so. I think the past four years, ever since the pandemic especially the yeah. nostalgia factor shot up yeah. and everybody, myself included, right? Mm -hmm. I, I was like just getting into the old video games and old yeah. Pokemon cards and anything that I basically had when I was a kid yeah. would just be the thing that I wanted to just have again, right? Because when you're a kid, yeah. I, I don't know how, I, well, you're young, we'll get into that. Yeah. yeah. So like you're much younger than me, yeah. but like, you know, when I was a kid, I, I would just get rid of all this stuff. Yeah. Cause like, I was like, I'll trade these games into GameStop or all, yeah. you know, like trade these Pokemon cards away or everything. It's a nostalgia thing for a lot of people. But that's what it is, I yeah. Think it's trying to grasp that feeling again, that what you had back then. Like that feeling of just reliving the moment when you thought it was going to be a forever thing. And exactly. You never knew when it was going to end, but it ended. And then now as we're older, you look back and like you miss those moments, of course. And these items will bring it back to you like in an instant. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I I throw in, you know, an old like GameCube game or a PS1 game. And I, I have two kids now. Like I have an eight year old and a four year old. And he's like. It's like, Dad, these games look like trash. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you shut your mouth. These <laughs> things were amazing when I was your age. Yeah. And uh, But he he's like into it now, too. Like, he's getting into Pokemon. He's getting into the, yeah. the video games and everything. And it's great because, like, it's making me relive that. But yeah, of course. I mean, now they're, re like, even in games, they're, like, remastering everything. Absolutely. Every game is, like, we're in an era of remastering. It's not new versions. It's a exactly. remaster of what it was. Well, because they're playing on guys like me. Yeah, right? that, exactly. That want to that wanna live that again. And, yeah, yeah. And, and while we'll pay i'm like i'm paying for that yeah, i will exactly. definitely shell out the money yeah. for that but uh but you know fast forward now so you're 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 young how old are you now i'm 22 dude so you're 22 you've had a store for how long now a year and three months and you're in the galleria in middletown gallery in middletown yeah. so that's a pretty legit spot to be in yeah yeah i went um realistically for me it was um go big or go home i needed it somewhere where i knew it was going to be stable like i wanted something strong i didn't want to go a lot of people go that route of on a strip, a random strip, um, plazas. But I wanted to go somewhere where I know people are going to be there every day, no matter what. Someone's going to be buying clothes. A family's going to be there no matter what. So as a, us, collectors, you have a family. You have a family. Your wife's not going to want to go to a card shop. That's my idea, that she was not going to want to stand around in a card shop. She can be in the Victoria's Secret, Forever 21. All these stores are there to just give you her time to go do her thing. You do your thing at my shop. Day. That's my pro my whole idea of going to a mall because it just saves everyone time. Everyone saves time going there. That's great. Yeah, because I mean, malls are but malls are tough. Malls, malls are, are really tough. tough yeah, to, malls to, are tough yeah. to succeed in. Yeah, for sure. You have to have what people want. You cannot waste space in that. Especially my space, it's pretty small. Yeah, you have you you pack a lot into yeah, that spot. Yeah, it's, uh, I just you know, just to let the people that are watching and listening I learned know, that. I stumbled into your shop. Yeah, and we connected that way. Yeah, was, I learned that so much early into opening the store that I needed to use every space. Like every space matters in that store. Like nothing can go unused. Mm -hmm. And that's I mean, no one taught me that. No one really gave me an idea what to do because that store is one of a kind in the area at least there's nothing like it in the area that's amazing and it's hard to um say what what it could be and what could it be in two years three years i don't, I don't have an idea but i know where i want to be in the aspect that it's just it's just it's a small space for sure and mm -hmm. i don't know what what i want to do with it i've grown into cards like you you came in for cards and that was amazing right it fell into a place where it made sense 
And then cards is just a big, big space. It's a huge space. Pops, uh, you know, you see all the Funko Pops. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. like, Pops was my gateway to go into collecting crazy, like okay. spending money like crazy. I never spent, like, $200 on anything for myself. Like a single item, you a mean? A single like, item, yeah. yeah. And, like, Pops was the first thing I ever spent, like, crazy money on. And my father used to, like, help me with that. He would be like, all right, if you want it, like, you truly, I think he knows it in me. I think he sees it in me that um, I'm a true collector. And, like, he, I think he brought it out of me more. Did he collect? No. Actually, my father never collected. My father loves motorcycles. And he used to have, like, little motorcycles, like, little okay. model kits. But that was it. He never was a crazy collector. So he just let me explore myself. He let me do everything. Like, he let me buy every pop I wanted. He was like, if you want it, you want it. He's like, you work for it, do this, that, third, it's yours. Like, he, and if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would be here, honestly. Honestly, I don't think I would open that store. I think I would be in a different path in life. Cause yeah. That opened the door for me in a big way. And now that I think about it more and more, it's just, if it wasn't for that, nothing. <laughs> I don't think I would be here. The store wouldn't be there. A lot of different things wouldn't be at play now. Yeah, that's cool, wild. Though. It's amazing. It's like a dream come true for sure. But it's, a hard, it's a lot of hard work in it. A yeah, well, of, we're going to get into that. Yeah. But like, so take me from like, Take me from before the store in in the Galleria to the Galleria. Like, oh, okay. were you were you selling? Were you buying so, and selling yeah. before? So, um, it really started pandemic. Pandemic time. I had a job. I was working at Old Navy. I was a full time employee in Old Navy for a while, but they cut us out. Of you course, were seventeen. Like, yeah, seventeen. <laughs> yeah, it was like right after high school. I took it like full time, and um, it was just I don't know. For me, it was um. When they started cutting our hours during the pandemic time, it was there was a money gap for sure because I was so used to making a certain amount, mm -hmm. and then debt played a big role. Like I, I had no one taught me real credit card control. I just was accumulating too much debt, and that was my problem. Mm -hmm. And Funko Pops, um, I started when I started going to shows. I started going to toy shows, and that's when I realized there's a real market for this, like a real, mm -hmm. real market, like. There's people standing online outside for two hours in the cold just to get into this show, just to see some pops, some rare pops. And like that alone just like motivated me to like, I need to start selling my pops. Mm -hmm. So it, w it started as a thing that I needed money. That was the main point. I needed my money and I had old pops. So I was just selling them off little by little. So you start with your own collection, yes. right? And I feel oh, like that's yeah. how a lot of this mm -hmm. kind of starts, yeah. right? Like guys, <laughs> you know. Guys and girls collect, sure. and then if they need a little bit of cash, yeah. they'll start to start to sell their own stuff. It was it was my stuff first, yeah. and then I just started seeing the numbers, and it was like it was crazy. It was like everyone was buying them. It was a very steady flow. Every it was every Sunday we would go to this toy show in um, Wayne, New Jersey, and it was amazing. I would pull so much. I would make good money, and it would help me pay off certain things. And I wasn't telling my father because my father he doesn't believe in that, and. And for me to tell him that, it would probably break his heart. So I was just paying that off on the side. He wouldn't really know. But it really did start like that. And then from that point on, I started taking it more serious. I was in college probably when I was 19. And then I had a real opportunity to like go full force into reselling. Okay. Like I saw something that I thought was going to be big. And like I took that chance. I took that leap. I sat down with my father and I told him, look, I don't think college is for me. Because he's always been college heavy. Like he's supported me throughout everything. He was like... But one thing he's one thing serious about was college. He was like, you have to go through college. If not, it just doesn't make sense. Like, it's not worth the pay going to a regular job. So, yeah, I went through college. And then I don't know what, what sparked me during college. I don't know. It was I was very um, open-minded to things. But during college, I realized that it was just not for me. It wasn't for me. Like, sitting through those classes, I was going for criminal justice, which was like, I don't know if I was trying to prove a point for him or myself type of deal. It was like... I don't know who I was doing it for. And that's when I like it hit me that I just needed to do something else. Mm. And the right opportunity just laid out perfectly for me where I just started reselling on the side full time. Online I, or in person? What were you in, doing? In person. In person. I never really did online at all, which is in, uh, a lot of people don't believe that, but I never really sold online, which is a, I think I'm missing out. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> when I think about it, I, I feel like I miss <laughs> I'm missing out on a a huge portion of something. Yeah, you know? but I've always done it in person. I've done a lot of shows in way in New Jersey. New Jersey in okay. general is like a central hub for collecting. Okay. So you're mainly selling at shows then? Yes, yes, yes. This area doesn't really have anything like. Yeah, that. I was. I'm trying to think. I'm like, yeah, I don't, like you, I would have been to it if I. If yeah, the way I used to find them was through Facebook. I would go on okay. Facebook and like just do collectible shows, but it'd be like okay. um, 
coin shows. It wouldn't be toy shows for sure. There's vintage shows, like yep. vintage toy shows. Yeah. But yeah. it'd be like once every four months. Sure. So the best way to find it in this area of flea markets. And they weren't really that. New Jersey was the... Doesn't happen too the, often either. Yeah, the New Jersey area was like the perfect area for mm -hmm. it. And when I realized this area was quiet and like not very serious with cards, pops, any collectibles, I saw that opportunity and took it. There was like, I know there's collectors. I there's I'm in mean, group chats in this area that it's over 100 people and they all collect the same thing. Mm -hmm. So and my idea is like, if we're all here... And we all have to travel all over there. Why can't I just bring it to them here? You be the show. I be the show 24 hours from 11 to 8 <laughs> at the Middletown Mall. Like, what? That was the only thing that made sense for me. It's okay. like, there's nothing in this area. We so what What made you take that leap then to open up a shop in the Galleria then? Because so the, going from selling at shows to taking on yes. massive rent and yes. liability and all that. So... Like you said, the last two years have been crazy. Everything spiked up. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate enough to catch that wave and really yep. just pump, pump, pump money out. And then with that, I saved a lot, put it to the side, and then just took that opportunity. I e I cold emailed a lot of places, like a lot of different spots. And like without an LLC, they won't take you serious okay. at all. That makes sense. And um, Middletown, the lady there, she took... Even though I didn't have an LLC, she she answered my email and gave me the roundabout of everything. And from there, I just ran with what she told me, opened the LLC, figured out all these little things that you have to figure out. And and I got it. I got the spot. I got approved for everything because you have to run it through the town and all that type of stuff. It was good. It was like it was everything placed out fine. Like I love how everything fell into place. Like, of course, I went through headaches, struggle, whatever. But it was worth it. Every second of it. Every second was amazing. And if it wasn't for that leap, uh, it was it was going to be a little bumpy road. But it it took her trusting me and believing in what, what could it be. Because they needed a place like that. She told me herself in that email. I remember she said, we've been looking for a, a store like that. So I'm. she was always open about helping me and... Letting me know what the heck I had to do. And that was perfect. I needed that. Because no one, uh, around here, there, there's no one that would open openly teach you these type of things. I had a, one of my friends in uh, Jersey has a store. And he taught me a couple of things. But it's just, it's very time consuming. You have to really be there 24 hours to understand that. And for me, I learned it little by little, baby steps, baby steps. That's how I did it. Yeah. So you said you would, you'd kind of saved and were selling. And you saved and saved and saved. So yeah. like, so you were able to just open? Uh, yeah. So they um, they required a lot up front, for sure, because sure. yeah. it's just a trust thing, and they don't want to waste time. Because yep. mall location, even though malls, a lot of people say malls are dead, in this area, it isn't because there is no real mall around here. There's only Middletown. Newburg Mall is not really mm -hmm. a, a staple anymore. Yeah. And so my idea was that no matter what, this is going to be a good spot for that area no matter what because there's nothing in that area for people to you know go you have to go far at the end of the day we had to drive forward to a nice mall we had to drive probably 45 minutes into an hour and locally you just want to go somewhere fast yeah you think middletown or poughkeepsie that's yeah yeah that's your main two go-to's that and that's like perfect <laughs> yeah for us at least right but it was hard it was definitely hard um to understand that mall aspect and know what people want in that mall so you have to know everything. You have to know like the ins and outs of what a mall does for you. You're paying high rent, but you're bringing. A but there lot. is a value. There's a, there's there's a perceived a, value there's a there, of course, value. right? It's a it's it's a lot. Like I said, it's a lot of money up front. For a lot of people, it's scary money. But if you don't take the risk, then it's never gonna be what you really want to be. If you don't take that big leap, you have to trust yourself. I didn't. I trusted myself no matter what. I never had a real doubt in my head. I, I really trusted. Everything like it, it. I feel like if it wasn't falling in place how it wasn't how it was, then it wasn't gonna work. But everything was just working out so perfect. And you had good timing. Like your timing oh, yeah. was prime. Per you yeah, just, mm -hmm. yeah. That's that was just good of you to take the opportunity. Yeah, as it came, my right? idea was that I'm young. No matter what, how I see it, <clears throat> I can make a mistake. No matter what, sure. I'm very young. So if I fail, I fail. I learn from my failure and just push on. And hopefully, the next thing I want to do will be a better version of what that was. Yeah. But so far, man, it's been a blessing, like real blessing. The community awesome. has opened me 
opened their arms to me very good. Like everyone loves that store. And the more and more I I try to be there for everyone, the better it gets. Everyone just loves that store. It's a it's a great store. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> it's yeah. always something that I wanted. I I uh, the way I modeled the store was how I would want to have an experience in a store like that. Right. As, as a collector. As so a you, collector. you have a, you have the perspective I model of a collector, as a collector yes. selling to collectors. Yes. And then that also, that there's pros and cons to that because there's, there is a business aspect to this stuff yeah. and you have to always be on top of that stuff because if you don't, it's always, it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, again, that's something I learned on my own. Yeah. I, what's, what's something that you would say that, you had to really learn and struggle with when you when you went from you know collector to business owner because that's a big it's a big leap right? yeah a lot it of, is a huge leap because a lot of guys do this kind of on the side like they'll sell on eBay they'll sell on Mercari maybe they'll sell on TCG yeah. and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and they won't take what that leap that you did to open up a store take on that big responsibility so what, what's something that you really had to kind of learn and struggle with to get through that what I um honestly it's the you can't be ha I mean you can't there's always going to be critiques of little things. I mean, I always get, there's always going to be judgment, no matter what there's judgment in this whole space. And um, my fear was that I was going to lose friends because I'm not a collector as I was before. I'm more into the business now. So my passion for collecting has slowly went away because I had to focus on the bigger picture of what I really want to do. So that was my learning to let it go a little bit to to really push forward what I want in the future, that's my, like, I used to go crazy, man. I, I would go to Walmart, Target, and come out with five pops at each store. And, like, now I go to those places, it's like, what do I need for the store? What do I need for the store? Do I need this? Do I need? It's not mm. what, does, what does Russell need? What does Russell's collection need? It's more of what does the store need? It's mm. not for myself anymore, which it's, I'm happy. I'm not, no matter what, I'm happy, like, the store is going to need that stuff, right? And it needs me no matter what. And I can't push my time to collecting as much as I want to okay. before. So the best way around it was just, <laughs> I just have to collect what I love, certain things, I guess, yeah. right? And but there could be a time where that all Yeah, I think if I, I have to learn to uh, delegate time to others, to other employees. I have, an empl I have a little team. But I'm there from a, a prime majority of the time. Okay, and I have to like I have to learn to like push that on, uh, push that away, and let them work it out. Mm -hmm. And I just watch from the back end. Gotcha. So that's what I'm slowly learning as well. Again, I'm uh, everything's a learning process. Like I haven't really met anyone who has a store. I don't have friends who have stores. My family doesn't come from business, and it's just it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I was gonna I was gonna say that's difficult, right? Because very difficult. You know, I, I I we have some entrepreneurship in my family too, but it's yeah. there's not much of it. And yeah, it's, no it's, real the real entrepreneurship I get from my family is probably my brothers. My brothers have their own businesses. Um but again, their their business is very way different in what I do. They do a uh, taxi, they do loans, they do that type of stuff. They do big businesses and I my when I when I expressed myself to everyone that I was gonna take this serious, they looked at me crazy. I'm gonna be honest. They all looked at me like, "Oh, that's what you really want to do." I'm like, I think this is what I really want to do. Like, I found passion in collecting, and I know there's passion around everyone for collecting. I'm like, I know I have something in my hand that it's untouched. Like, it's touched, but not to where it's like a broad thing, like a normal thing. It's not collecting. I feel like is a very quiet thing. Sometimes people tend to hide what they collect instead of being very open to what they collect. Why do you think? Why do you think? I that don't is? know. I don't know. I think it's judgment. I think it's just uh, you. You scared. think people are afraid to be judged by based on what they collect? Yeah, like that was me I, uh, during high school. I was like that. I was scared to let people know I collected Funko Pops. Yeah, like uh, for a long time. I don't know when that I let it go, but there was a, there was a time where I just like was too scared to let everyone know that I had like over 300 pops in my bedroom. Like I was like, it was just like a thing. Like I was like, maybe it's not a cool thing, but in my heart, I loved it. So I didn't really, it didn't matter to me. My friends loved it. I, all my best friends knew I did it, mm -hmm. but it was just like as a, to the public eye, was that a normal thing to have? And then slowly I started figuring out, yeah, it is. And that's why, um, that's why I think it's like a, not touched. I don't think a lot of people just don't want to show it off. I, I show it off all the time now. I don't care. Like it's very open. Everyone knows I own the store and stuff. So it's like uh, it's a cool thing knowing that 
I'm bringing people out of their shell because a lot of I met a you you'd be surprised we get so many people in that store that you just don't realize they're collectors but they're hardcore collectors like it's funny you just every day I meet someone new that I never knew would be a collector yeah and like I can see these people I probably see these people on my day to day and I'm like I would never see see the collector in them but they're hardcore yeah it's cool that's it it's amazing that I can do that and it's like I want to focus more on that being open about your collection because it, it it's benefits me more than and it just helps people to be very open about what they feel and what they want to do mm-hmm. because it's hard sometimes people just don't want to do it they want to show what they love mm-hmm. it's a more hidden thing i don't know i've always been open just during that one time in high school i was just very scared and very very like i just didn't want to want to know yeah it was funny well it's pretty obvious now that you- oh yeah <laughs> Now I, the 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 collector in me is in there, but like yeah. it, it's hard. It's is it? A, do you ever get you ever get something that comes to you in the store or at a show or something that you're like, oh man, this would be great for the store, but God, I really want to keep this. Oh yeah, I'm a very I'm a hardcore uh, Mewtwo collector. Okay, so anything Mewtwo, like I collect card their cards and it's uh it's very hard. Cause you ever I, have to sell anything yeah, that you really oh, wanted shoot. to keep? Oh, all the time. I'm like I, like I always uh, I talk to my fiance. I'm like, hey, you think I should keep this? And she was like, just keep it. I'm like, <laughs> she's like, just keep it. I don't know. She's like, oh, she's always giving me, uh, she's always telling me I overthink it. I'm like, yeah, but I think it would sell so fast. And she's like, just keep it. Like, you bought it for a dollar. <laughs> like, are you seriously stressed over a dollar card right now? <laughs> and it's just like, No, yeah. but, now, but now you're between two minds, right? You've got, the, you got the, yeah. the collector in the back of your mind talking to you, being like, oh, you should keep this. But then you got... And it's smart. It's smart that you're thinking this way. You've got the business side of you that's like, yeah. I need this for the store. Like, yeah. That's, that's, oh, yeah. That's it's, tough it, be- it's tough, but I learned to balance it. I think I give myself like a mini budget in my head like, okay, you can keep one thing a week and then uh, everything else. Like, <laughs> I'm sure if you get something at a good enough deal oh, that you yeah, want, yeah, you're yeah, going to be like, sure. this is coming home with me. Oh, this yeah, is not yeah, gonna be yeah. Here. Yeah, but, um, but you know, that's, uh, that's also a good point. The, you have to have that mindset because I've seen it. I've seen guys that just keep a lot of their stuff and then that's just their downfall. You're not a business at that yeah, point. You're just a collector. Yeah, you can With rent, yeah. Yeah, you just, you always, you have to put the business first no matter what. Like, you can't put yourself first. It's, it's never going to work that way. You always have to put what the business needs first. If not, it's going to fail. And then, then people don't want to accept that. You have to. It's just, it's the truth. Like, no business will thrive if you don't put it first. If you put it on the side, it's always going to be a side thing. So you have to be smart about every choice you make. Everything For me, everything has to be precise. I can't, I can't put a dollar out if it won't make me money. Mm-hmm. And people call me cheap sometimes because I just don't buy certain things. Because it's just, I know in my head it won't sell. Like, I know. I'm a collector. Like, if I don't have that, if I if I look at something and I say, I wouldn't even buy this. Why would I buy it to sell? To sell to somebody yeah, else, it sure. Wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. So, yeah. you have to make, you have to overcome those stuff. Like I said, back to judgment. People critique. We get, sometimes we don't, they don't like our prices and all this type of, it plays, a lot of different things come to play <clears throat> in the business. But you can't satisfy everyone. That's the one thing I learned the first six months of opening that store that I can't satisfy everyone. And if I focus on trying to satisfy everyone, it will be the biggest thing that throws me into like sadness or just overall like a headache in the aspect that I want to make this person. I want. I, I try every day to make everyone happy, but there's, there, there's certain things I just can't, I can't do everything. And I have realized that the first six months I can't do everything because the first three I spent the, spend i spent most of my time trying to satisfy everyone finding those little things they want mm. and then the next three i spent stressing out money can't sell it can't <laughs> sell it like it's so you have to you recognize that early though that's good because yeah. what happens is a lot of people that go into business on their own they feel like they have to do everything they have to like you said they have to satisfy every single type of customer yeah. and that's a really easy way to put yourself out of business yep, it is true because you're going to stretch yourself too thin maybe you're maybe you're taking on a, a product or a service that you don't a hundred percent know enough about or you're not as passionate about or yep. you you know it might you might just be doing it to appease somebody just going to bite you in the ass in the yeah. end because you're going to be sitting on the shelf we were blessed enough to have a really good first six months and where we were very stable and um by the by first year I've, well not even first year probably nine months in i realized the love for pokemon was so big in that area i didn't have cards like in the beginning i didn't have cards the way cards started for me was at grand opening 
um, this lady came in, wanted uh, to buy these two boxes I had, like random Pokemon boxes. Because meanwhile, oh, back to uh, even when you want to talk about grand opening real quick. Sure. When I <laughs> when I first opened the store, I think I sold my whole collection with it. Like I had my personal stuff. And when I was slowly building into the store, um, I realized we didn't have enough stuff to fill those walls. And the and I took that step. I was like, all right, well. It's time to let go of my stuff because mm. it was just like I have to fill these walls. I don't want to yep. open a store that's half filled. It just, just doesn't make sense. Sure. If it's gonna start like that, then what am I setting myself up for? Right. So I took that sacrifice, I, and it it hurt me for a while because I love my pops and I have so much sentimental value to a lot of things. I kept a lot. Don't get me wrong. I kept the, like my expensive ones, but I got rid of like the little ones that I have stories for, and that one helped me a lot though. If it wasn't for that, that that would be a, a headache for sure. So back to that, back to Pokemon. I didn't have Pokemon at first. I only had like two boxes. I started with two boxes. They were expensive. They were like 200 bucks. And this one lady, she was like, I want your two boxes. I was like, yeah, I'm like they're $200 day off. And she was like, yeah, I know. It's okay. I was like, okay. Was this on your, when you, right when you opened? Literally the first hour oh, okay. of opening. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I'll trade you a bunch of my stuff in, in for it. And I was like, okay. I was like, cool. Yeah, let's do that. So she brought me cards and we traded and I take in trades, right? People bring their stuff just to make it the price mm -hmm. more reasonable for people. And from that point, I sold her, I sold her cards off within the next two days. But I put it to the side because I was so busy on that focus on pops. But and then I like I look back and I was like, what happened to those cards? And then uh, I had an employee uh, cup the first three weeks, and she was like, you know, you sold those cards, and I was like, oh wow, okay. So I started buying little by little, but cheap stuff, cheap, really cheap cards, nothing expensive because I didn't want to take that risk yet. I was too scared. Mm -hmm. And then um, I don't know what led me to like go crazy with buying expensive cards because that's a big leap that's a, another yeah. leap in within the leap i already made and it's a it's a very time time consuming thing but i love pokemon i knew it since little and that's the only other thing i'd be like that makes sense for this store like that makes sense for that store and it if it wasn't um i don't know i i why my one memory was that um i had a customer come once He's like, give me every Charizard. And like, he took every Charizard. And it was like, my three expensive cars were like 50, 70 bucks. I was like, wow, that's a great sale in my head. And I was like, it clicked that I just needed to go full force on this stuff. I'm like, if someone can just pop in there and just want every single one of this specific thing. Yeah, there's one of them, there's, there's others. Yeah, yeah for sure. and if they can do that, I think I have something that I'm just, again, not taking advantage of. Like, like online sales. Like, I, that's another thing I don't take advantage of. But in that moment, that's like clicked again. And from that point on, I went, I went crazy. I bought like so much, so many collections. And my whole philosophy on this thing is that I want to be the best in the area, not in the area, best of what I'm doing. Like, if I'm gonna do pops, I want to be the best pop seller. If I'm gonna do cars, I want to be the best Pokemon seller. I want to be the best version of anything. Like that's my. You want to be the very best, is yeah. what you would say. <laughs> there you go. But I wanna. I just want to be the very best in this whole thing, and that's my whole thing on that. Did you like, intend? Did you mean? Did you mean to do that? Did no, you mean to bring that no, 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 no. I honestly didn't. Um, so that's my thing. So if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it full force. I can't half-ass it. If if I do, then I won't. I won't feel satisfied at the end of the day because I know I'm not doing what I can do to my full ability. So you you have to full force everything. I mean, uh, I don't know. I've always been like that. I go crazy. Like, my, uh, my fiance thinks I'm crazy when I go, like, far to buy a collection. I'm like, it's so worth it. I'm like, and I'm like, no one has it in this area. I'm like, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's true. Like, if you look at what we have now, there's nothing in this area that has what we have. You have to drive far. And, and it's an I did the map. I did the... Uh, I did it on Google Maps. What was another store that is capable to our level what we have? It's an hour and a half. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and then it's just like, so if I can dominate this area and have the best store where you can come in and see 20 different things you want to see, like you want a vintage, but you also love the new set 151. So I have both. I have mm -hmm. so much that you can look over. And like even you said, and this is going to cost me so much money because like you love so many different That's things. Right. Yeah. And it's just... If I have it all in one spot, where else would why would it why would you go somewhere else? Yeah, you if you have everything what you want or what the co consumer wants, you're you're perfect. You there is no big flaw in that. There's never enough. That's what you also have yeah, to believe. Sure. I believe in. There's never enough. Like I can buy Pokemon all day, 
It's, yeah. it's crazy. And it will go. It will go. I got, for me, it's just an investment. I will I like, if we buy it at the right price and I could sell it at the right price, we're solid. I mean, yeah, that's good. There is no flaw in that. And, you just have to be really smart with the money. You just can't spend to spend. You have to really watch the money. Like, mm-hmm. If you don't watch it, it's it's gonna go away. It's yeah. gonna go away fast. She's a cruel mistress, man. Yeah. If you don't watch her, she'll. And I learned go that away. very. I, I mean, I'm happy. I hit. I feel like I hit rock bottom before I opened the store, like with debt, because debt's scary. I've had. I accumulated so much credit card debt. It was insane. Mm-hmm. It was like it's the scariest thing I think I went through during that time, which was going through debt. Which was it was just scary. Yep. That taught me a lot. That taught me a lot to manage money right, to use credit cards in the right way. But now I don't have debt, and I hate that. I will never go back to that. Never. I can't. Good for you, man. I feel the same way personally. Yeah. So that's yep. It's yep. It's scary. <laughs> I think it's scary. It's, it's like, risky. I mean, yeah. there's 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 good there ways are to certain use it. opportunities to use it. Yeah. Um, but if you can help it, yeah, don't. Like, don't do it. um, you, I don't know if you, but I get emails all the time from Chase or I use Square POS mm-hmm. and, um, they'll send you a thing and they're like, you have $60, $60,000 spending I, power. I get it all. T- yeah. yeah I I get, like, I'm like, no, the credit cards, <laughs> I'm like, that's such I, a, they, I was like, yeah. is there a way to mute these? I'm like, I I'm like, but, uh, I, you ha- I have tolerance and I've learned to, well, like I said, that taught me to manage everything, do it on my own, learn from it, keep growing from there. And then it's just. I don't know. I don't. I like debt is just too scary for me to that's, ever yeah, touch it. That's understandable. Now I totally it's. Uh, it, and I'm like I said. I'm very grateful for it to be how it is right now. We're we're very stable. There is no. I love it. Yeah, like it's that's no good, problem. Man. It's a snowball for sure. It's a snowball effect with the cards. It just keeps pushing on its own. As long as you invest it a good amount, it'll grow from there. Yeah. And that's what I've yeah. learned that I like. I always think about. It, I'm like, why? Why is it that a lot of people come? And just buy, sell, trade like crazy. And I'm like, for them, it's a snowball too because they've accumulated all these cards and they can just trade it in, get good value, sure. and make it get something bigger. Get the stuff bigger. they want. Yeah, get yeah. the next And it's a snowball want. for both of us. And if you walk out happy, I'm happy. And I try to make everyone happy at the end of the day. If I can't, we'll figure it out next time. Maybe this wasn't the deal for you. Maybe the next one will. Yep. Simple like I that. I love it, man. Yeah. I love it. So um, so where can people shop with you and how do they get in touch with you if they want to sell stuff, buy stuff? Just they, meet you. They can see us at Middletown, New York. One, well, it's one gallery a drive, Middletown, New York. <laughs> so you <laughs> well, guys are next to JC Penny and JC uh, Penny the Middletown Snipes, Galleria. Yeah, mm-hmm, that's our that's our main spot right there. Sweet. Yeah. Good man. Uh, you guys, any socials that you want people to follow? You yeah, about? we have Instagram, uh, Rojas Collectibles. Okay, that's our main thing. Uh, Instagram. Insta? Yeah. All right, cool. But you're on whatnot too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've done that. Yeah, twice now. But yeah, they can find us on whatnot too. Sweet. Yeah. All right, man. Well, this is a lot of fun. I love talking this kind of stuff with you because yeah. i'm a collector myself yeah. and um yeah man good good luck to you man it was yeah. really great meeting you cool. like just kind of running into you a yeah, couple weeks it worked ago out that a was, perfect way that was I, awesome very very cool so yeah. um but good luck to everything man yeah. i'll definitely be in the shop again soon and appreciate you coming on yeah. man cool man thank you